four days ahead of Mandir inauguration. Udayanidhi invokes Babri Masjid. Akhilesh's uncle backs 1992 firing. BJP questions opposition Mandir boycott. Will 2024 become Mandir election? And four days before the Pran Pratishtha ceremony in Ayodhya, one of the sharpest voices on all things Mandir, all things Shankaracharya, all things spirituality and civilization breaks his silence in his first interview on this topic during this season. S. Guru Murthy will be joining me right here on Five Live. He will be taking all of my questions. It's going to be an unsparing take and live here on Five Live. Thanks for being with me. I'm Shiv. These are the headlines first. With four days left for the consecration day, Ram Lalla idol placed in the Ram Mandir Sanctum Sanctorum. Centre announces half day off for all central government employees. Prime Minister Modi releases Mandir postal stamp. Exclusive details of Prime Minister Modi's 11-day Anushthan ritual. Sources say Prime Minister Modi sleeps on the floor as part of this ritual, shuns food and sustains only on coconut water. Delhi Chief Minister brazens it out, skips the fourth enforcement directorate summons in the liquor gate probe, claims BJP witch hunt against him. BJP hits out, calls him a chore in their slogans. Expelled Congress Neta sits on a fast and a protest against Youth Congress Chief B.V. Srinivas says no action has been taken against her alleged molesters. She tried to meet Rahul Gandhi on his yatra, but that meeting did not happen. Iran versus Pakistan escalates. Pakistan launches drone and missile strikes on Iran. Seven terrorists killed. Iran demands an explanation. Powered by Rumta Seal TMT Bar. Egg them solid. There are only four days to go, viewer, for the long-awaited Pran Pratishtha ceremony of the Ram Mandir in Ayodhya. Four days left. You can now just count the hours. But the one thing that has marked the journey towards this Ram Mandir has been an almost uninterrupted level of politics, whether it is criticism, boycott politics, or everything in between. In the latest now, the Samajwadi Party's leader, Shivpal Yadav has justified then Mulayam Singh Yadav government's order directing the police to open fire on Kar Sevaks in Ayodhya in 1990, saying that it was done to protect the constitution. Well, jumping into this whirlpool of politics, Tamil Nadu Minister Udainidhi Stalin, the Chief Minister's son, said that the DMK's opposition to the Ram Temple in Ayodhya was only on the grounds that it has been constructed after demolishing the Babri Masjid. On the other hand, Karnataka's D.K. Shivakumar has clarified that they are not anti-Ram and also added that they should, there should be dharma in politics, not politics in dharma. In Bengal, it's the same story. It's the BJP versus the Trinamool. After West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee announced an interfaith rally in her state for the same day. The leader of the opposition, Shuvendu Adhikari, has filed a public interest litigation seeking the High Court uh, inter, uh, High Court's intervention to defer the Trinamool Supremo's rally, which he says would deteriorate law and order in West Bengal. So these are just a few short examples of how politics, it certainly appears, is not about to end until the Pran Pratishta ceremony itself takes place. Bharati Janta Party ke keval jhoot bolte hai. Bata yo court ka adhesh 
का पालन हुआ था संविधान की बस रक्षा हुई थी जब जति वहां पर जब कोर्ट का स्टे था यथा स्थिति बनाए रखने थी तो बताओ वहां पर जो विवादित ढांचा था जो बाबरी मस्जिद थी तो बताओ उस पर जब इन लोगों ने तोड़ा था तो वहां के प्रशासनिक की जिम्मेदारी थी इस कोर्ट के अनुसार यथा स्थिति बनाए रखनी थी तो किसने उस पर तुम संविधान के उल्लंघन किया था கலைஞர் வந்து ஏற்கனவே சொன்னார் எங்களுக்கு வந்து நாங்கள் எந்த மதத்திற்கும் எந்த ஒரு நம்பிக்கைக்கும் எதிர்த்த எதிரானவங்க கிடையாது அங்கே கோயில் வர்றது வந்து எங்களுக்கு பிரச்சனை கிடையாது ஆனால் அங்கே இருக்கக்கூடிய அந்த மசூதியை இடிச்சுட்டு அங்கே கோயில் கட்டினது தான் எங்களுடைய நாங்கள் எங்களுக்கு அந்த உடன்பாடு கிடையாது ஆன்மீகத்தை அரசியலையும் ஒன்றாக்காதுங்கிறத சொல்லுங்கள் it is our personal liking and disliking i believe in all community all religion it is our faith ultimately we all believe in our own whatever we practices will that affect you in lok sabha sir there is nothing it is no way connected to this one but one thing we have to tell there should not be politics in dharma there should no 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 be politics in dharma जानुरी अपना जान राम मंदिर उद्बोधन हो हिंदू समाज स्वतस्फूर्त भावे प्रत्येक मंदिर मंदिर से दिन पूजो कर भगवान राम आराधना कर देवतार मंदिर तर आराधना कर रनैतिक मिचिल ये मिचिल आंदाज कर सर्वधर्म नाम आसले बाबर लोके दापा दबी करा बाबर समर्थक नहीं मुख्यमंत्री So it's very clear that there is this huge mahal over the mandir but the politics is only escalating very honored and privileged to be joined now by S Gurumurthy he is the very popular editor of Tughlaq one of the finest voices uh, on the issues that we're about to discuss uh, uh, good evening mr gurumurthy good to see you thank you sir for your time uh, on this particular issue i know you have a lot of opinions about the things that you've been seeing going around i'd like to start right at the very basic level sir on the pran pratishtha the fact that the ram mandir is becoming a reality after such a long time you know everyone is aware of the journey it has taken to reach this place your your thoughts and sentiments at this time with the ram mandir insight sir see it is amazing that uh, the opposition is uh, replaying uh, what it has been doing in 1980s and 90s at that time it was considered by everybody including the government that uh, the structure which stood in ram's birthplace hmm. was a disputed structure and it was an unoccupied structure it was not something which uh, the uh, government's post independence began saying it was in 1886 a british judge who went to the spot to inspect uh, the building there the status of the building there on a case filed for recovery of uh, rama janmasthan by somebody hmm he said that it is unfortunate that a mosque has been built on the place held sacred by the hindus by baba but it is completely unoccupied there is nobody in it and it is a deserted place but still after 300 years i will not be able to order any remedy hmm. so the what he said about ordering the remedy is not relevant what he said about the state of the building that it was an unoccupied structure is relevant so for somebody to say that it is a mask how did the idea of mask come in you see many people do not know even what happened last year but hmm. since i have had been associated with this movement from the beginning from 1984 it was first the congress government which declared in parliament that it was a masjid it was completely a fake declaration because the government's own record showed it was a disputed structure and in the government's own uh, white paper which they published 
in 1993 after the demolition they hmm. called it a disputed structure it was only in the interregnum it was called as the mosque to turn it into a dispute between hindus and muslims and at the global level hindus yes. were defamed and humiliated as having destroyed a functioning mosque so you can understand the level of illiteracy that prevails or the extent to which the uh, whole discourse and debate is being distorted to continue mm. the same politics which has turned the country into a very different country the politicians do not even have an intelligent way of expressing their selfish uh, politics mm. how, how but mr gurumurthy in light of what you've just said and you've given us a you know a brief historical perspective in light of that how do you see uh, you know many of these opposition parties specifically the congress party's decision not to go for the pran pratishtha ceremony does it hold up in your book uh, uh, you know in terms of what has happened in the past you see the congress is always uh, wobbly and shifty for example 1989 uh, when they hmm. permitted the shilanyas the most yes. powerful government since independence was rajiv gandhi's government he permitted the shilanyas but he also did not allow the further proceedings in ram janmabhoomi but he started the 1989 election campaign from ayodhya yes saying that he will work for ramarajya from then onwards when the congress began declining its capacity to take a decision on ram janmabhoomi also declined with uh, mulayam singh getting elected in up and uh, at the center rajiv gandhi getting defeated the whole scene shifted to not only what is seen as a muslim centric politics but hmm. it is also to uh, characterize muslims as uh, opposing ram janmabhoomi in fact the muslims did not even know that uh, it was a masjid they were told it is a masjid the hindus are targeting your masjid and so an opinion was being created by sustained efforts by pseudo secular forces in which the left historians played a tremendous role and uh, kk mohammed who was part of the uh, archaeological team which investigated in 1976 the structure he said the muslims are willing to hand over the structure in 1990 uh, the place but it is the left historians who prevented them saying there mm. is no evidence of rama being born why are you handing over on a false claim so you can understand politics was being played at mm. acutely and the muslims were being told that this is a movement against you they may not even have an idea that what is babri masjid if you go and ask in ayodhya the mutawalli in 1949 of the of the uh, structure wrote and gave it that we don't want it because they didn't even know how to maintain it so this whole idea of uh, the ram temple being a project against the muslims is being sustained now and in, mm. because they can't oppose it today the supreme yeah, court has yeah. given a unanimous judgment and it has been proved by the judiciary that the temple uh, temple was demolished and a masjid was built now they have to find other reasons no 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 shankaracharyas are not uh, uh, supporting it no no mm. no it is modi centric function i mean understand that the temple is the longing of the hindus who have nothing to do with politics in fact you converted them into a political force they would never have thought of for example uh, gandhi ji when he began uh, reciting ram naam hmm he said many people said the muslims won't accept gandhi ji said i am laughing that you are saying muslims won't that the muslims won't accept it is to make them say we won't accept it this is right. the kind of politics which evolved even in gandhi's time and that is being sustained it's very unfortunate mr mr, mr. mr. guru like i, I have even if you don't like yeah. you must say no, yes, I, we are i understand what you're saying so yes. i have a you know i have a follow up question to that because uh, uh, you know i know you don't like to get into the political aspects of it but i'm still going to ask you uh, because the 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 pran pratishtha is being painted as a modi centric event it's being done for politics as an election year etc strictly strictly from that political prism sir 
Do you think that the opposition parties, uh, you know, have, have made a mistake by boycotting this ceremony? Or was it just cold politics? Or do you think it's whatever be the decision, it was an error since this was supposed to be a ceremony that projected some kind of unity and it wasn't really about just politicians? So I will answer it in three ways. One, hmm. the Pranapratishta follows the Shilanya ceremony where yes. Modi took, sat and took the Sankalpa. At that time, no one objected. Because this entire movement was a mix of state, constitution, politics and culture. Hmm. Otherwise, Narsimara government would not have passed the law to acquire the Ramjan Bhumi to be given to that side which establishes its rights over it. This was the uh, law passed in 1993. Yes. This law was passed in 1980, 1990 also. In fact, I was the author of that law along with Arun Jetli, mm -hmm. where we said that you acquire that place and then you hand it over to whosoever proves the place belongs to them. This principle was accepted by VP Singh. It was accepted by, by Narsimha Rao, that is the Congress. Yes. And the same principle was followed throughout the hearings in Allahabad, in the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court already said you hand it over to the uh, Hindus because they had established that there was a temple beneath the mosque. Hmm. So there was a mix of uh, legislation, constitution, politics, culture, faith. And how do you say now you have got to uh, see her through all this and say that uh, this is purely religious? It is not religious. It is the state has a, had a very definite role in this and the prime minister represents the state as prime minister mm. and he also represents the movement which uh, brought about this change. So he has moral authority, legal authority to be the hegemon. And I don't think any other person has that authority. It is a, hmm. it is a political movement uh, mixed with uh, religion, culture, constitution. So do you, do, do you see the religiosity and the sentiments of you know, millions of Hindus, Mr. Gurumurthy, as separate from the politics? Or the politics is secondary to the larger, larger emotion of the actual event? And therefore, those who accuse, uh, you know, 100%. those planning the Pran Pratishta see, as doing this for electoral gains is irrelevant or it's relevant because there is a large part of this that is political, sir. The second point I wanted to mention to you is the hmm. Congress was undecided about whether to go for uh, the Pran Pratishta or not. Yeah. But why did they take the decision not to go? It is because... The Kerala Muslim League threatened the Congress. Now the CPM has decided not to go. What are you going to do? And the most important seat for the Congress is the Vainat seat. Hmm. And Raji, Rahul Gandhi's safest seat. And the Hindustan Times reported, if I remember correctly, that a large body of Congress people wanted to participate, but Rahul Gandhi was against it. Hmm. So it is Vainat versus attending the function. So that it, it was intensely personalized to politics in my view. I have also written okay. about it in the Tughlaq editorial that this is not being very widely discussed. So my view is it is a decision against the Congress. It is not only a decision against all that the Congress has stood for from Mahatma Gandhi's days, in Rajiv Gandhi's days, even in Narsimha Rao's days. Hmm. It's a very different Congress today. Yeah, yeah. And once the Congress decided like this, the other parties had no option. They had to align their decision in some way. <coughs> and this assault has, has also given an opportunity to uh, 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 Samajwadi party to say what they did in 1990 by shooting the Karseveks is right. Yeah, that's what they said today, yes. Mr. Gurumurthy... A I complete replay of 1989-90... Yes. Yes. I, I'd like to I'd like to come now to the issue of the Shankaracharya. The complete replay of nineteen ninety. 
you know, the Shankaracharya's issue has, you know, also taken center stage after some of them spoke out. Then there was some back and forth, there were some clarifications, lots of sound bites that did the rounds as well. What did you think of that, sir? Uh, you know, the, 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 the overall sense one got was that the Shankaracharya's, uh, you know, didn't like what was going on. They had uh, concerns over the, 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 the structure of the Pran Pratishta ceremony, the fact that the mandir is uh, incomplete in that sense. What did you think of what the Shankaracharyas had said? You see, as one who has had very close association with Shankaracharyas from Indeed. my birth, and the traditional uh, uh, Shankaracharya view, that was expressed by the Kanchi Shankaracharya, who completely keeps away from politics. He never hmm. makes a controversial statement. He has blessed it and said this is a great thing that is happening. The presence of nobody is a must there, except the person who is going to take the Sankalpa and the Ejman. Hmm. So, he, I have seen Shankaracharya's presence in Kumbhavishekam. They don't go and do the Kumbhavishekam. They are present there if you are invited. Otherwise, they bless it. So, some misunderstanding has come because of the fact this is a very, very uh, nationally and globally very popular function in which there would be expectations on the part of many muts also that mm. they should be there. But the important point is that Ram is common to all. He is common to the Shankaracharya, the Vallabhacharya, the Madhvacharya, the Ramanujacharya tradition, the Ramananda tradition. You, he, 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 Rama, Rama is common to all. Buddhism has its own uh, Ramayana. Uh, Jainism has its own Ramayana. Sikhism has its own Ramayana. Mm. Rama is central to all. The Nihangs fought for Ram temple being six. So, it doesn't belong to any particular religious denomination. No particular mm. religious denomination has the right over the rituals of a Ram temple. This is the Shankaracharya right. of Kanchi very, very clearly because this is the only mutt which has refrained from the deeper politics in this. So, my feeling is that there has been a misunderstanding and another thing, the Agama Shastras apply below the Vindhyas. Mm, Above mm. the Vindhyas, it is the local traditions according to which the temple is built. Somna temple was uh, consecrated by installation of the Linga when yes. the, even the Gopuram was not completed. But it, it is the case of the Gujarat tradition. So, to apply common standards for evaluating how the uh, temple should be constructed or consecrated is not within the four realms of Hinduism. Hmm, hmm. What did you What did you think, Mr. Gurumurthy, of the opposition parties? Uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, trooping behind the Shankaracharyas and what they said. Was that just pure politics? Was that desperation? It was quite a spectacle because, uh, in usual course, many of these parties, you know, want nothing to do with the Hindu godmen and the spiritual gurus and leaders. They're usually quite suspicious of them, especially the you know, the left parties. Uh, but it was quite a it was quite a political moment to see all of these parties holding up what the Shankaracharyas and said uh, had said, to, uh, as if to suggest that look, you are wrong, and here are the Shankaracharyas saying so yourself themselves. You see, it is laughable that you take the decision that you will not attend the function because it is a political event. There was no. The, whether it is right or wrong, it was a principle stated. Hmm. Then you begin saying, no, no, we are not attending because Shankaracharya is saying this. <laughs> we are not attending because the temple is incomplete. We are not attending because the rituals are not proper. I mean, you understand, you yeah. take a decision first and then begin inventing reasons. And I think there cannot be a cheaper politics than this. And I am only... My only concern is not about this. These people are going to lose very heavily. Because a woman uh, fast, uh, uh, did not speak, kept silence for 30 years because the Ram temple was not constructed. Hmm. 
a whole community stopped wearing the headgear the pagdi for 400 years around ayodhya the surya vanshis yes. till the ram temple is built this has nothing to do with politics this is a widespread feeling which the political parties converted into a political proposition and in 1989 90 handed it over to the bjp like they handed over vande mataram like they handed over ramaraja then they handed over everything that drove the freedom movement and the spirit of the pro freedom movement the secular politics the pseudo secular politics moved away from nationalism yes and the bjp moved into it to occupy the place which the pre independence congress had occupied it's a foolish thing to hand mm. over the entire concept of nationalism to one party it's your True. mistake you know you mentioned you mentioned south of the vindhyas and north of the vindhyas mr gurumurthy and i want to explore that theme a little deeper because you know we are seeing uh, quite a bit of north south politics uh, you know after the recent elections we're seeing prime minister modi uh, you know touring southern temples over the last few days you know very evocative imagery as well you have udayanidhi stalin in tamil nadu saying that you know we oppose uh, the ram mandir because of what happened with the babri masjid uh, you know there is there is a very star- a kind of north south uh, uh, you know political uh, attempt to politicize that north south divide with some suggestions also that you know ram is not such a big deal in the south as much as he is in the north and therefore you can't look at it the same way how would you how would you address this north south divide or this manufactured north south divide over ram sir you see actually the north south divide has always been kept as a kind of a political argument hmm. for example mrs gandhi was wiped out in the entire north and she won in the entire south it was a political divide on emergency her policies herself is it a north was the north south divide so political divide being hmm. given a cultural color being given a religious color being given a uh, uh, the division in the idea of india is again extension of uh, the pseudo secular politics for example the, you you take uh, 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 rama the kul devata of rama is ranganatha in shirangam kul devata and rama's worship or mm. kashi yatra is incomplete without somebody going to rameshwaram this applies Indeed. to every community in 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 tamil nadu whether somebody is dmk or admk or communist or uh, bjp they pass through this this mm. has nothing to do with how they vote for they vote for caste basis they vote for some language they vote for some policies they vote for some leader but the underlying feeling that this country is one cannot be shaken by any of these there is no north south divide in that sense it's completely foolish and motivated okay foolish and motivated is how you describe it but that hasn't stopped uh, you know the politicians from stoking that uh, you know north south politics uh, uh, you know suggestion and that notion and i imagine you're going to see a whole lot more of it going into this election cycle as well mr gurumurthy i want to come now to uh uh you know narendra modi himself the the politics we see playing out is largely centered around the fact that this is like you like you uh, like you mentioned uh, while uh, quoting the opposition parties a modi centric event he's the one who's going to be there the yajman uh, you know the spotlight will be focused on him uh, but you know he isn't just the prime minister is he he's someone who was part of the ram janmabhoomi movement there are images of him from the rath yatra and we'll play those images also on our screen in a moment you know alongside lk advani how do you see the narendra modi role here sir it's not just as you know the ram mandir rising during his prime ministership isn't it it goes beyond that he has a long linkage with this movement and this sentiment i i i tell you he was one of the most important organizers of not only the ram temple movement he was part of the uh, movement against the emergency but you know in the rss nobody gets projected 
the entire movement was sustained by the uh, religious people religious leaders and the rss how many names you have heard it is only the political side adwani and people who were associated with govindacharya pramod mahajan you would have heard this name but that his name was not heard was not that he, he was not part of it he was very mm. very much part of the movement not only as part of the organization but personally i know it so because i have been associated with this movement from 1984 I, a, any number of documents i have drafted the bjp white paper itself was uh, in a way uh, my responsibility so all of us played a role but do you mind if, uh, see my name there mm. it won't so that is why it is a movement so somebody gets projected at a point of time uh, advani ji turned the whole thing into uh, the most massive uh, mass movement of india but yes. he, he did not do it it was because of the great preparation that had gone on he could light the uh, uh, he was he threw a matchstick in a, uh, a, a in a in a cauldron so my view is that narendra modi was very much part of this movement and as advani said destiny has chosen him to fulfill the task you see the opposition doesn't know how to handle the modi phenomenon because they have not come across a prime minister who has 48 hours a day and who works and he speaks he travels he imagines and he not only has been able to cement and uh, uh, become popular in the country he is now the most popular leader in the world and so they have to demean him here and there hmm. and the instrument that they have chosen in india that is the ram temple is probably the poorest political instrument for the opposition to do something against modi but i think they want to sustain the notion at the global level that this temple was built uh, destroying a mosque which is a fake case hmm. you know fake case sells in politics today so my feeling is the opposition is fighting a losing battle on the ramjan bhoom issue no intelligent person would have taken such a foolish decision of boycotting in fact they could have said we will not uh, we, uh, up congress did a very uh, uh, clever move that we will go and do darshan earlier and they had uh, saryu uh, snan and i mean you could have done something like that yeah because it is modi function we don't want but we want to respect ram there is Indeed. no uh, see subramanyam once said most politicians are so selfish they do not understand what is being intelligently selfish so this they are <laughs> not even intelligently selfish one final question mr Gur- uh, mr gurumurthy before i let you go uh, i'd like to just zoom out a little bit you know from the the politics and the kind of vitiated atmosphere politically speaking around the mandir uh, you know the, w- one of the things that all of us can agree on and which is beyond doubt is that uh, you know the, the 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 journey to this ram mandir uh, has had uh, uh, you know uh, many ugly incidents there have been riots that happened after the demolition of the babri masjid etc now the mandir uh you know is projected like you rightly said as a as a symbol of unity as a symbol of uh, you know harmony that will bring people together how hopeful are you that that will happen sir that in the shadow of the mandir in the wake of the ram mandir rising there will actually be greater inter religion harmony in this country you see it is inevitable it is inevitable that uh, the movement which uh, reoriented the disoriented post independence indian politics back to where it was before 1937 hmm. that is the real india it accepted all the faith all ways of worship and there has never been a, a real life theater like india anywhere in the world that you could worship any god and you can have contrary worship within hinduism you find uh, arya samaj saying we don't believe in idols and within hinduism they are hindus they don't believe in idols mm. and nobody has rejected them intermarriages take place jains reject the concept of vedas but there is intermarriage between jains and uh, hindus 
You see, it's a, it's, it's the positive side of how this whole civilization had evolved. That is what is the idea of India. And that is being recalled, reinstated by the Ram Temple movement, although it had huge, huge objections. And even the riots that followed after the uh, Babri yes. Masjid demolition was because the Congress called it a mask. If the government had said it was a structure in disuse for the last 200 years, which Muslim would have uh, uh, opposed it? How they would have gone uh, in emotion at such uh, high altitude levels? They would not have. You promoted it. You wanted it to sustain a kind of politics which was divisive. But my only worry is, why are they replaying it? What is the need for it? But I think the movement has grown so much. Yes. It has acquired constitutional validity today with the, the Supreme Court convergently, all the five judges deciding. And uh, uh, the state law ensuring this, like uh, Somnath. I think there is a large consensus transcending politics, transcending all divisions, transcending the kind of... Uh, narrow uh, attitudes which the opposition party is taking, which is being seen as people's unity. It is cutting across all regions. Absolutely. So my feeling is, as someone who has observed not only politics from the media perspective, from business perspective, from economic perspective, but also from the perspective of the Ramjan Bhumi movement, I think this is a paradigm shift back to where India was before 1937, about which not much is known. Many people do not know that the uh, Muslims, that is the uh, Muslims of uh, Gujarat, Kachi Mimans, they had only one sacred book that was Dashavatara, hmm. in which nine, nine avatars were common between Hindus and them. It is only the tenth avatar name which they called Ali, and we called Kali. This was the extent of uh, uh, understanding and underlying unity, even between Hindus and Muslims. Yes. This was all destroyed in 1937, when Jinnah asked the British government to pass the uh, All India Sharia Act, which created the Muslim identity in India. The entire politics today centers around that. Well, the, uh, it's a know, sad Guru story. Muthi Yes, the, the paradigm and it is shift being that you... Overcome according, it is being overcome according to me. Indeed, and I think it the paradigm shift... It is being overcome shift, according to me. The paradigm shift that you described, Mr. Gurumuthi, is a, is a good note to end this discussion on. I think it's something to very much look forward to. Uh, hopefully, the era of politics over the Ram Mandir is a thing of the past and the, the beauty of it, the sentiment of it can harmoniously radiate out in all directions because like you said at the beginning, this is something that involves millions of people across the world and it isn't just about uh, you know, us talking here. But I think it's uh, important that this message goes out. So I'm going to hold on to that very, very closely. Mr. Gurumurthy, always a pleasure, sir. Thank you so much for speaking to India today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, that was uh, S. Gurumuthi speaking for the first time here on India Today on the issue of the Ram Mandir. We've got some breaking news coming in now. On India Today, the idol of Lord Ram has been placed on the seat of the Sanctum Sanctorum of the Mandir in Ayodhya, the Garb Griha. The idol has just been placed on its seat seat it took a total of more than four hours to install the Ram Lala idol on the pedestal inside the Gard Griha so we can confirm to you now this is going to be huge news for Ram Bhakts everywhere the idol has been placed on the pedestal and was completed amidst the chanting of mantras and worship rituals during this time the sculptor from Karnataka Arun Yogi Raj and many sadhus were also present. The final consecration, of course, still takes place on the 22nd of January. The fully covered idol of Ram Lala has now been placed on its pedestal. The coverings will be removed on the 22nd. Okay, we're taking a very quick break here on the news, but on the other side, the other big story that we're tracking a day after Iran targeted terrorist camps in Pakistan, 
Pakistan has now retaliated and targeted sites in Iran. Where is this going? We'll be joined by one of India's best-known experts on the other side. जो भी मिला इसलिए मिला कि हंस के बहुत कुछ खोया हमने ये जो सूरज देख रहे हो जुगनू जुगनू बोया हमने और दुख जब हमसे मिलने आया उसकी हिम्मत टूट गई झील भरी थी आंखों में पर कतरा भी ना रोया हमने मिलिए मनोज मुंतशिर से साहित्य आज तक लखनऊ में लाइव फ्री एंट्री के लिए रजिस्टर करें www.ajtag.in slash sahitya par ya missed call DJ 9310 par India today is back at the 54th annual meeting of the World Economic Forum in Davos In a world rocked by war and division what's the best way to rebuild trust from geoeconomics to geopolitics, artificial intelligence, to climate change. Catch top global gurus, leading economists, and corporate honchos. What's the world thinking of the India growth story? Watch Davos brainstorm all through this week, only on India Today. quality today in Delhi 364 in Mumbai 164 in Kolkata 223 in Bangalore 67 in Chennai 60 in Hyderabad 75 this as a civilizational moment for Bharat or is there merit in the opposition saying that this is being done only with general elections in mind? You see, there are different perception with different people. I don't like to comment on them. But one thing is for sure, this moment no one should miss. You should keep your politics apart, politics aside and come and participate in something that is so dear to the Hindus of the world, the Sanatanis of the world, who uh, River Ram so dear. You know, even Mahatma Gandhi's last word was Hey Ram. So, that Ram is resounding not just in India, but also beyond our geographical borders like Thailand and Indonesia and all these countries in the East and also in the West. All the way up to Mexico, people are very much aware of Ramayana and Mahabharat. And uh, this is the moment of celebration. You know, actually, uh, Gaurav, when the uh, judgment was pronounced, Gee. then itself people wanted to celebrate in the entire country. And it was the wise decision of our Prime Minister and our government to give this statement not to celebrate so that it shouldn't hurt anybody 
uh, faith, anyone's sentiments. And so people have been holding in their heart the wish to celebrate and now that is their moment. And it's a perfect time that has been chosen. And so I think um, this is the time everyone should come together, forgetting their ideological, political differences and just participate in this grand celebration. You are a day after Iran bombed targeted sites inside Pakistan. Pakistan has retaliated by sending missiles across the border into Iran. These are some of the first images of the Pakistani retaliation on Iran, the moment where missiles land on Iranian targets. A full-scale conflict has broken out uh, diplomatically between Iran and Pakistan with each side pulling out their diplomats and demanding an explanation. But I want to make sense of this. Here on India today, we continue to try and decode what this exchange between Iran and Pakistan really means. I'm joined here on Five Live by one of India's most well-regarded strategic affairs commentators and observers of the region, Sushant Sareen. Sushant, welcome. Uh, sorry, we've come to you a little late. We uh, got a little delayed in our earlier interview. But, uh, you know, your, your thoughts on this, you know, Pakistan has hit back at Iran, Sushant, now. Uh, do you see this escalating further? Um. Shiv, I think it will depend critically on how the Iranians look at the situation. I think mm. uh, they had initially assumed that the Pakistanis are very weak, which they are, uh, and that the Pakistanis will be a bit of a pushover because the Pakistanis would not want to open a fourth front. They are already mm. you know, involved in three fronts against India, the Islamists and against Imran Khan. So opening up a fourth front against Iran would actually become even a bigger problem for them. But uh, they probably did not count for the fact that the Pakistan army is under siege. Uh, you know, it's fighting against its own people, trying to foist a new government in Pakistan. Uh, mm. Not very popular right now. Uh, and uh, for the Pakistan army to not even be able to respond militarily, they responded diplomatically initially, mm. but to not be able to respond militarily, uh, would, uh, would really uh, impact on their image and... Uh, their USP as far as Pakistan is concerned, their res on the ethra in, in a sense. Mm. So I think the Pakistani hand was forced, uh, but I don't think the Pakistanis want to escalate it beyond it. So now the ball is in the Iranian court. The Iranians are huffing and puffing and making this big show uh, of power by uh, you know launching these massive exercises, which leads me to believe that they will do all of this, but they will not push it beyond the edge, simply because you know this is the Iranian modus operandi. They they bring in their troops, they, you know, flail their arms, they make the show of force, and then they pipe down after they've mm. done it. Uh, they've done it with the Afghans earlier, with the Taliban earlier, now they're doing it with the Pakistanis. So I don't think the Iranians will take it to the next level. But if they do, then it will be because for the Iranians, the challenge is now going to be that if the Pakistanis get away with this, then yes. there are a lot of people in the West and in the region who say that, look, Iran has been, you know, meddling in a lot of uh, things in the region. Mm. They have been using their proxies. So what we now need to do to teach Iran a lesson is to strike at Iran itself. There's mm. no point hitting at the Houthis or at Hezbollah or Hamas. Let's hit at what they call the head of the snake. Now, if they were to do something like this, then Iran would really have a huge problem on its hand. So for Iran, they need to disabuse the people you know, that if somebody hits at Iran, inside Iran, 
then Iran hmm. is not going to take it lying down. Now, yeah. this is going to be the dilemma for the Iranian leadership and how they are going to rule. I wish I was an Ayatollah and I could tell you <laughs> or I was a member of the IRGC, but I am neither. So, I'll just wait and see how they are going to respond to it, but my popcorn is out. <laughs> your popcorn is out and I saw your tweet as well. Sushant, one final question since we're running out of time, which is, you know, the, the India part of it. Yesterday, the External Affairs Ministry put out a statement, uh, you know, where they said uh, India understands, uh, you know, actions taken uh, in self-defense by a country, which was seen as a, uh, you know, a word of support for Iran. Uh, you're seeing a lot of voices in Pakistan trying to sort of blame India for what's going on, this whole exchange. How do you see that and where, you know, uh, uh, what do you think of India's stand in this whole thing? No, blaming India is stupid, you know, which I expect from the Pakistanis. Because I, after all, it's not India which asked the Pakistanis to keep jaish e adal in Pakistan and sponsor uh, Sunni extremist terrorism in Iran. So yeah. it's not, that's not on India's head. Uh, India, of course, has confabulations with Iranians on very important security issues which involve our interests. For example, there is a lot of business we are doing with the Iranians. Uh, strategic level business, Chabahar port and all of that, the, the north-south corridor. Yes. And also, we need to impress upon the Iranians to try and rein in the Houthis who have been raining missiles, some of which have affected our shipping and Correct. is affecting our trade. So, we will, of course, have a conversation with the Iranians. But are, are the Iranians anybody's fools that just because we tell them something that we want you to go and attack Pakistan, the Iranians are such big idiots <laughs> that they will go and attack Pakistan. So, Iranians have their own agency, they have their own calculations, they have their own reasons to do what they are doing. The Pakistanis need to, you know, face up to it and deal with it. They have dealt with it in one way. But we'll have to see whether this spirals out of control. My own sense is that the Iranians also would not want to push it beyond a point, but it's going to be a very difficult choice for them. Okay, what that face saver will be, where that exit ramp is, we don't know yet. They probably don't want it to escalate. But we leave it there. The story is most certainly far from over. Sushant Sarin, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time here on India Today. Thank you. Coming up after this very short break, that's a wrap on 5 Live. Four days left for the big Pran Pratishtha ceremony in Ayodhya. The Ramlala idol has been placed inside the Sanctum Sanctorum. It's a huge moment that we've reported first here in India today. Rakshita has all the details from Ayodhya next. Sacred Nagar Brahman.